What's up my friends, welcome back. This will be another Q&A where I will answer all your questions and I've made the post like three or four weeks ago and I'm very sorry that I haven't, uh, I didn't have time to answer all your questions till now, but since the ESC project, which is a project that I've shown you in the last uh, Electro News, was, uh, that project is not ready yet. So this week I won't be able to post that project. So I think now is the best time to post this Q&A. So right now I will answer first the question on Patreon and then I will answer the questions on YouTube. There are more than 110 comments on YouTube, so I won't be able to answer all of those. And especially because there are a lot of comments that are already repeated, I answered those questions in other, uh, in other Q and A's like what I'm using to record my uh, my videos or what is my degree and so on. So if you want to know more about me and about this channel, please watch the other Q and A's. I will try to leave the links, the, all the links below because I've already answered a lot of those questions. Okay guys, so let's start this Q&A. First, I will go with the questions on Patreon and I will do my best to answer all the questions, but there are a lot of answers that I don't know. So let's start with the first one. This is from uh, Manuel Polo. Would you accept evaluate some patrons or even others one circuit on your channel? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think that you refer that you would like to send me a circuit or a product to well, tell my opinion about it. That would be great, but that means that I will have to share my address and I don't want that. But I do prepare a mailbag and I see the, the next question. Let me just ask you the next, next question also from Polo because it's related to this one. Related to that as some of my other favorite uh, electronic channels like Andrew Spies, Spies and EV Blog, would you add something as a mailbag on your videos for purchases or from Patreons? Well, this is the same question. I don't want to share my address for now and I don't want to receive the packages home. So I will have to, uh, to purchase a PO, a, PO a PO box. Yes, I think it's called a PO box from my uh, mail system. And so people could send, a, send me the products there and maybe once a week or every two or three weeks, I could go there, get all the products, all the PCBs and maybe make a mailbag sec section on my videos. So yes, I'm planning that, but it's not that easy for now because I have to see uh, which uh, mail system has a PO box and then I will share that with you and if you want, yes, of course, you could send me your PCBs and I will, I will just test it, maybe even uh, make a project with it and so on. Okay, this question goes like this. This is probably more of a question about software than electronics, but I've been looking for a tutorial that demonstrates using an Arduino to control IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, there's a lot of information about how to turn an Arduino into an, uh, into an IoT device. Uh, including your videos, but I want the Arduino to be the device doing the controlling. Well, uh, thank you very much. I love your channel. First of all, the Arduino that uh, the Arduino project that is IoT that I've made, the Arduino is the one that is controlling everything because you send and receive data with the ESP, but the Arduino is the one that is controlling the relays, the buttons, and so on. So if you want directly the Arduino to control the Wi-Fi connection, well, without a Wi-Fi module, it can't. So. I, I think that my project will help you because in that same video I'm using the Arduino to control everything using the IoT system well, where you save something on a database and then you get that data and use it to control stuff with the Arduino such as turning the lights on or maybe control an RGB LED well just watch that video I'm pretty sure that it will help you if that is what you are looking for recently we have noticed a dip in your videos that you get what are you doing to stay motivated and where do you see the future of your channel well, yes, I've already talked about this in my Electro News. The, the first video about the Electro News, I've been talking about this tip. And yes, the tip is very big. It's, it's a little bit strange for me that a channel that has 240,000 uh, subscribers doesn't get even 1% of, the, of those subscribers to view, my, to view the videos. So to stay motivated, well, at the same time, I have other work because I have the websites. I'm right now I'm working on some and some courses for Arduino, courses, yes, online courses for Arduino, and those will be in Spanish, so I'm not sure you have, if I will be able to post those on this channel as well, but for now I have other work that I, I'm doing and I have a lot of cool projects, so that motivates me. And I hope that in the future this channel will get even better and more views, because that actually uh, motivates me a lot to know that you enjoy my videos and that you watch my videos, because if I make a, a project and you don't see it, well, that doesn't motivate me at all. Okay, let's go to the next question. This question is from Conrad. Can you explain if an Arduino can be used to remotely activate multi-trigger system? Example to trigger groups of fireworks remotely 
or set at random times. Well, yes, actually I have a lot of projects with that using the Arduino and uh, I'm not sure what you mean by remotely. I mean, you, you need Wi-Fi with an IoT connection or just RF connection with radio control. But I have a project, just search my channel for the Arduino Tourette, the 3D Pretty Tourette for the tank. And if you want to control fireworks, for example, all you have to do is to connect the, well, the radio receiver. And when you receive the data from your radio transmitter, what you could do is to connect a MOSFET and to that MOSFET you connect a nichrome wire. And those, if you apply 5 volts or so, or maybe 12 volts, those will get very, very hot, even glowing hot. So you can connect that around the, the firework and that will enable it. So all you have to do is to press the button on your remote control, the Arduino receives that data and then it will activate the fireworks. So that would be a, a pretty good example. Using the NRF24 radio module, you could get up to one kilometer distance if you want to be sure that you won't be near your fireworks. Okay, so let's go to the next question. The question is from Dragomir. Hello, I have, the, uh, I have three questions. I hope that you don't mind that. Not at all. How do you prepare for another project? Well, I have a to-do list. I, I've already talked about this a lot in my Q&As. I have a to-do list, I gather information, I gather the parts, I make the tests, and when I'm sure that I'm be, I will be able to make that project, I start recording. That's how I prepare for any project. How much time do you need to make one video? I've already explained that once again. Usually, if I have all the information, maybe one or two weeks. But if I don't have the information, it could take up to years because I have to make tests. If I fail, I have to make more tests. I have to buy more, more parts, gather more information. And, then I, and when I join everything together, which could be up to one year for some projects, well, then is the time when I record the project. But usually if I have everything prepared, two or three weeks, uh, I'm usually recording more projects at the same time. Okay, so what equipment do you use for filming? Once again, I have these two cameras. These are two Canons. I am using a Levier microphone and for recording my voice, I'm using a studio microphone, which is uh, T-Bone, the, the brand. Okay guys, so these were the questions from Patreon and now we go to YouTube. And as I told you, I will jump through the questions because there are a lot of questions that are repeated and also questions that are not meaning, uh, they are not even questions, are just requests. Please do this project or the other. So let's go to YouTube and see uh, another question. Hey guys, I'm just taking advantage of this video to tell you something very important related to these questions and that is about the forum that I have on electronews.io slash forum. Please use it because I have a lot of questions that I receive on my mail, on my Instagram account, on my Facebook and I don't have time to answer all of those. And I've put a lot of time and work in that uh, forum and it seems that nobody wants to use it but it's very easy to use it. So if you have any question about programming, about uh, circuits, about electronics in general, just go to electronics.io, you can create an account in just a couple of minutes and post your question. And I promise you that I will ta uh, take a look over the forum each uh, week, maybe even twice a week, and I will try to answer those. And the best of all is having a forum, uh, it will be better for you because other people could also answer your questions. So please don't try to contact me on Facebook or Instagram because I don't have time to answer all of those questions and use the forum. It will be good for you, it will be good for me, and good for the entire community. So yes, it's very easy to use it, so check it out. I'll leave uh, links below. Thank you very much, so let's keep going with the Q&A. Okay guys, I think that I won't say your names because I'm not sure if I will pronounce it well, and also there are a lot of strange names with strange letters. So the best thing that I could do maybe when I would edit the video is just post the question with your name. Anyway, that's not important. Okay, so the first question goes like this. Do you have a permanent, aka conven conventional job? I know that you got an engineer degree. Well, no and yes. I mean, YouTube is my normal job right now. And I'm also sometimes working in an escape room, is the escape room that I show you when there are fails and so on. And sometimes I'm making some um, projects or websites for other people. So those are not conventional jobs, but yes, right now my, main, my full job is YouTube. And not just YouTube, not just YouTube, my website, I even have an online, online shop. And now I'm working on these online courses for Arduino. Do you remember the first ever PCB that you have soldered? Yes, I remember it. it and it was an H-bridge because in that time I was, I was wanting to make my own radio control car and I needed an H-bridge and I was using the TIP, uh, TIP 31 and 32 uh, BJT transistors. I'm not sure if I have some photos with that. I'm sure that I have those, but I'm not sure if I will be able to find those and place those on the screen. But those were my first PCBs and uh, they work quite well. Okay, so the next question from the same guy. Do you have a girlfriend? I know that uh, this is a personal, personal question, but I'm just curious. 
Okay, so many of us who are good with the technical side of the life aren't always so smooth with the ladies. Best wishes from South Africa. Well, actually, I'm engaged. So I know this is new for you, but uh, yes, I'm engaged and we're, we, we're, we're supposed to have the wedding this year, but because of the coronavirus, that's impossible. So we, might, we, we, we will have it next year, I hope, because with this virus, we will never know. Okay, so next question. What goals do you have regarding electronics such as ASICs, RF and FPGAs? Well, I don't really understand what, what do you mean by goals? What goals do I have with an FPGA? I do want to learn even more because all the knowledge that I have about FPGAs is the one year that we made in a university and then some projects that I started on my own. But there is not much information about FPGAs. I would like to make more videos, but first I have to gather more knowledge. So my goal is to just learn more to be able to make more, more projects. Okay, next question. Do you know how much India loves you? Well, no, I have no idea, but I do know that the second place of my viewers is from India. I think it's United States, India, and then Germany or something like that. So I know that I have a lot of followers from India, so thank you very much. Please, I want to know how regenerative braking works through a BLDC motor controller, offering constant voltage and current. Well, first of all, I'm not sure about what I will say, but I do think I've seen a lot of uh, regenerative braking, but those will nev were never uh, applying constant voltage and current. Because you see what you, what you do with uh, regenerative braking is when you brake, you take the voltage that the motor is creating, you rectify that, maybe you apply a filter with a capacitor and that voltage you put it back into the battery. But we're not using any voltage converter to step it up or maybe step it down to the exact voltage and current value. Maybe you have a, a current limiter, but usually all the voltage that you get from the motor, you place it back into the battery and then you have the BMS of the battery that it will be in charge of uh, limiting the current and maybe even the voltage. So the BLDC ESC is not responsible for regulating the voltage or, or at least the circuits that I've seen. All they have is a full bridge rectifier for a, a triple phase bridge because we are using brushless motors with triple phase. You rectify that voltage, you apply it with a filter to the battery, and then the BMS, the battery management system of that battery, would be in charge of controlling the current that is going through the battery. And if the battery is almost, uh, it's already full, well, it won't charge it. Because imagine that you start with your bike on a hill and the battery is 100%. And on that hill, you start braking. You will charge the battery even more than 100% and you don't want that. So usually the BMS is the one that is in charge for uh, applying a const constant current or maybe a constant voltage, but I'm not sure about that. Okay, so this question is about the portable soldering iron or soldering irons in general. My question is, uh, which way of controlling power to soldering iron is good if the cost is not an issue? Using DC source and MOSFET or using 12 volt transformer and the triac? Well, even if cost is not, not an issue, um, more efficient about what? About size, because if you want a portable soldering iron, for sure you, you will want to use DC power because you want to use batteries and you don't want to use an inverter connected to transformer and then to your triac and then to the soldering iron. So if you want to make it portable, just use DC with batteries and a MOSFET. At the same time, if you don't want to make it portable, have in mind that the MOSFET will have a lot of losses in the heat. You will need a heat dissipator on top of the MOSFET because it will get very hot. But pretty much that's all you lose because with uh, AC power, especially at 12 volts, you won't get too much speed. Actually, nowadays, th those tips are very good uh, quality. And even with DC voltage, it will heat up very fast. Maybe in 10 seconds, it could get up to 300 degrees. So I think using the MOSFET is a lot easier to control because the triac, you have to control the triac, uh, the poles, the, uh, how it's called, the firing poles at the gate of the triac in order to control an AC signal output. So I think it's a lot easier to just make it, use it with MOSFETs and DC, DC uh, power, from my point of view. Okay, the next question goes like this. What tools do you recommend when starting with electronics? I'm pretty sure that we had this question uh, in other uh, Q&A, but anyway, I'll say it once again. Usually when you start, you will need a multimeter, maybe even a soldering iron to just start making your own projects, but you will need also the oscilloscope, which could be a little bit expensive, but you have those oscilloscopes which are portable and are not that, that expensive, and also power supply. So you need the, multi the multimeter, the power supply, oscilloscope, and maybe a soldering iron. These are just basic. And then of course you can buy a lot of other stuff, like uh, tweezers and stuff like that. 
Okay, have you ever thought about doing some audio-based projects, maybe a guitar amplifier? Well, yes and no, because audio amplifiers are, are very sensitive, it's not, my, uh, it's not my topic, I'm not very good with that, and all I could do is just copy another circuit, make it, or my, make it my own circuit and make a video with that. So, since I'm not that good with that kind of circuits, that's why I never made a project with that. Would you like me to just copy a project of an audio amplifier, test it and upload a video? Just comment below if you like that. Hi, I love all your videos. Keep the good work. My question is, I have a high voltage power supply. This is a car ignition coil. When I turn it on in the same room, I see that my PC it starts flickering and my PC makes the USB connecting sound. The da -da -dum, I, I think that is the sound. What do you think about the problem and thank you uh, for what you are doing? Well, I think it's not a pro I mean, yes, it's a problem, but I think it's just noise created by those high voltage arc because those will create some very powerful electromagnetic waves. Also, if the car ignition coil is creating high voltage, high frequency, that could probably get to the, your circuit and mess with your USB input. Or maybe that voltage will go back through the power supply of your home and get to your, to your uh, laptop. So make sure that you have some sort of insulation between your coil your high voltage coil and the rest of the electronics because that could be a hazard for any electronics that you have plugged in. Imagine that your high voltage will get into your main plug and ruin all your TVs or your laptops and so on. Will you be covering an any RF non-IC module project? Well, uh, yes, I do have on my to-do list a project related to those 433 megahertz modules and these are not using any IC. Well, maybe an amplifier, but we do need an op amp to separate the, the analog signal that you receive and make it digital. But the, uh, what I want to do is to make a module that will send signal from one Arduino to the other one using this, uh, this frequency and also to make my own circuit, maybe even with an amplified antenna. I have that on my to-do list, but I'm not sure when I will be able to do that. I've made some tests, I had good results, but the circuit is not ready yet. When I will have it, I will maybe even make a PCB and of course upload it to YouTube. Okay, so I had a lot of these questions about please make more tutorials about the STM32 or if I will make any project with the STM32. For like three or four months, I bought some STM32s. I'm making tutorials with, not tutorials, I'm making projects using Arduino, but I never uploaded something because I don't have enough knowledge about the STM32. So when I will gather all the information about how to control the registers and so on, I'll make another project and teach you how to use the STM32. Starting from very basic, how to control it with the Arduino IDE, how to upload sketches and then how to control registers and so on. The same that we have done with the Arduino Nano and so on. So yes, stay tuned because I will make a series with the STM32 for sure. And even maybe show you how to make the basic circuit and place it on a PCB and use it on your own PCBs without using the small modules. So use your own PCBs with this microcontroller. What do you say about EV blog video where you send him your own version of the soldering iron? Justify, justify your uh, it or react. Yes, I've seen that video and actually he didn't give it too much time and he made some mistakes but it's also my, my, my error not explaining how to use it. Because you see he start uh, placing the tip without the case and the case is crucial for that uh, soldering iron because the tip must uh, touch uh, the, those pads inside exactly in, uh, in one position. So if you place it inside too much, it won't touch those pads. So the case had the important, uh, it was very important because it has a stop inside. So it will snap that tip, tip exactly in front of the pads. So it will make a good connection. But he tried it without the, the case. So the tip was never in place. Uh, he was told uh, that, that it was a very bad design. But if you place the case, which is designed in such a way to keep the soldering iron tip in place, you won't have any problem because that's what I'm showing in the videos. But anyway, is that, 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 that is what you expect, expect from his videos. I really like uh, his videos. I watch pretty much all the, his videos, even if they are 40 minutes long. When I'm working, I'm usually listening to Dave. It's uh, one of my favorite uh, YouTube channels. Okay, so the next question. Can I charge my mobile specified with 5 volts and 2 amps with a 5 volts and 4, out, 4 amps turbocharger? Does current consumption depend on the load in, the, in this case? Well, yes, current consumption, consumption will always depend on the load because if you follow the Ohm, Ohm law, current is just voltage divided by resistance, so the load. So in this case, if your phone is designed to just uh, uh, use 5 volts and 2 amps and you plug it in uh, 
5 volts and 4 amps uh, charger don't worry it won't draw 4 amps because the 4 amps is the maximum output current that that charger could deliver that doesn't mean that it will supply 4 amps at your in your phone i'm pretty sure that your phone will have some sort of current limiting uh, circuit inside so if you uh, if you plug in a turbo charger to a phone that doesn't have uh, speed charging it won't draw that amount of current it will draw only the current that the phone is designed to draw i i'm not sure but i'm pretty sure that is the question the answer okay let's see the next question when are you making the sstc uh, video yes i told you uh, uh, once again in other videos that i'm working on an st sstc project I've made some pro uh, some tests on the breadboard, but I not, for it now I'm not having uh, good results. So when I'll have uh, good results, I'll make the video. I'm not sure when, but it will be maybe in a few months. So have in mind that I have that on my to-do list. Just wait for that. Is there an online electronic simulator that actually works and it has no has an extensive library of components that you can use in uh, in the simulator and in the real life? Well. The simulator that I'm using, which I'm not sure if it's online as well, is LT Spice. It has a lot of components, a lot of BJT transistors, amplifiers, transformers, and so on. So that's the simulator that I usually use, and I don't know any other. I think the Design Spark also has a simulator. Design Spark is a PCB uh, designer, but I think it also has a simulator, but I'm not sure. So I'm not sure what to recommend you. Is there coming any basic component video? I want to see more videos like that. Well, yes, sorry, I know that I haven't made a basic component video in a long time. And also sorry that right now I don't have a basic component on my to-do list. I know that I should have one, but for now I don't have. Maybe I'll make another video about tracks because I would like to explain something more about tracks, but I'm not sure yet. So right now, no, I don't have any compo a basic components video on my to-do list. Okay, this is another like personal question, but anyway. What type of sports do you like? And do you play PC games? By the way, I'm not very comfortable uh, answering personal questions. And usually if you post something, please post it about electronics because otherwise it might be possible that I won't answer that. But anyway, this is not a so personal question. Usually I don't like that much sports. I don't like football, neither basketball. I do like MotoGP. I also like to watch snooker and uh, pool in general. I also like uh, tennis. And I think that's it. And also, I know this is just like a, a lot of people doesn't like this kind of sport. I do like UFC. I like martial arts. Actually, when I was younger, I was daydreaming about me uh, fighting in a UFC, a UFC combat. But then I, re then I realized that just another way of uh, screwing your life. So yes, I also like watching UFC. Not always, but anyway. Oh, there was also the question about what, what games do I play? Usually I don't play games, I've played a lot of World of Warcraft when I was uh, younger, but right now the last game that I've played was World of Tanks, which is an online game just fighting with tanks. Anyway, I'm not a huge fan of games because that's the best way of losing time. Once you are engaged into a game, you can lose your entire day. Which soldering station do you use? Well, I have a Yuhua, I have also made a review about the station and I use that only when I have to reflow something because it has a hot air gun but usually I'm using my TS-80 soldering iron but yes, when I have to reflow something I'm using that station which is the Yuhua station Okay, how can I increase the range of the NRF24 radio module to 2 kilometers? Actually, it's not that difficult, all you need is a bigger antenna and you need to have the amplified module I'll try to put on the screen, I just bought some NRF2480 module which seems they are, they are improved and they will go to even a uh, longer range. And I also recommend you to watch a video from the channel called iForce2D and that guy used this module up to 10 kilometers with an antenna this big, connected to a battery, he tied it to a post and then went with his car up to 10 kilometers and he was still receiving signal. So all you have to do is to use the amplified one with a good antenna and make sure that you don't have anything in between, just free space. But to 2 km kilometers, I'm pretty sure that you will be able to get with a bit better antenna. What about the RC paper plane project? Yes, I'm sorry, I know that I've told you that I will make this project, but first, first I have to make those small controls, those uh, actuators that are based on a coil. And for that I need a better resin because I want to 3D print those. So first I have to make that and then the paper plane. 
project. So yes, I'm sorry, very sorry. I'm not sure when I will finish that because I have a lot of other projects, but it is on my to-do list. I'm pretty sure that when I will have a little bit more spare time, I will, be, I will make that project because it's quite interesting to see. Okay, so this question is related with some other question that I've seen about the STM32. And he's asking me if I'm planning to make uh, the ESC with the STM32, uh, if I'm still planning on making the, S the ESC with the STM32. Well, yes, I've already uh, uh, ordered one PCB for that. I'm, I've designed the circuit and when I, when I will receive it, I will test it. But once again, I'm not that good with the STM32 because all the registers that I'm using for the ESC are different. You remember that we have the comparator input, which is controlled by a register. We have the PWM uh, outputs, which are also con control controlled by registers. So I'll have to pass over the entire data sheet of the STM32 and change my code and so on. So yes, I will make that project and I, will, I hope that I'll have it soon. And I hope that I'll have even better results than with the Arduino because Arduino is a lot slower. If I'm about to make a CNC writer or printer, can I get all the parts from a modern cartridge printer? If I have all the driver boards for the motor, and which uh, software is easy for beginners in G-code such a, for such project? Well, yes, you could get the step motors from your printer and also the, the linear rails, but other, uh, more than that, well, not. You will need your drivers and your microcontroller, which you could program, and I recommend you to use Arduino, and those very small uh, step motor drivers, which are the A4988 or something like that. And all you have to do is to charge up the code, which is called GRBL. That is a very good code and is the same code that I've used for my small CNC machine that was based with those small motors from uh, DVD writers. So yes, just use the GRBL with the Arduino and step motors driver and the step motors from your printers, because usually the printers will have some small step motors inside. But um, watch out, Usually those motors, because I've opened a lot of, three, of uh, normal printers, and those mo motors are not four wires, are five or six wires, because they have a strange arrangement of coils inside. So maybe you won't be able to use those motors. Okay, you should start a different series for various topics like IoT, robotics, etc. Well, I already have those series, but I can't make that much, uh, that many uh, videos about IoTs and so on, because it's like a more separated topic but usually when i have an idea i will make it also have in mind that i am working on a project related to iot and that will be also related to my website electronics.io and what i want to do is to just create a, such a product that is using arduino and the esp uh, the esp8866 and with that you will be connected to the database of my website and inside my web website you create an account and then you will create some, some sort of monitor and be able to control everything on your Arduino with the internet. So all you have to do is to just buy the product, connect it to the, your Wi-Fi connection and then from the website you will be able to turn on the lights and so on. And I, I hope this will be a great project. But it's a little bit difficult because there are a lot of uh, things to do for that project. So I'm not sure when, uh, when it will be finished. And also, what is your progress on the 3D printed plane? Well, I've already finished the P38, but I'm not uh, sure when I will be able to test it because it's quite big and I've already told you this in the Electro News. Uh, living in Barcelona is a little bit difficult to test these kind of planes. And also, if you want to go outside of Barcelona, you need a car and I don't have a car. So going outside with metro or a bus with a huge plane is impossible. So I'll have to get in contact with somebody with a car and he will have to take me outside, test it, and if I break it, I'll have to come back, fix it, maybe take some tools with me. So it is a little bit challenging testing that, uh, testing that plane. Okay guys, so these were all the questions. I know there are a lot of other questions, but some of those were, were the same. Like for example, I had a lot of questions about the NRF 24 radio modules, about increasing the range. So I've answered that with just one question. Also, there were a lot of questions about uh, the STM32, if I will make more projects. And there are a lot of questions that are a little bit repeated or just requests. So I don't take those in consideration. Anyway, I hope that you like this video. I hope that you learned something new about me, about this channel and about electronics. I will post another Q&A maybe in a few months. And I will see you in the next project. Thank you very much for supporting my work, for supporting my channel, even for supporting me on Patreon, because that help is, uh, is amazing for me. And yes, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Keep up, you guys.